What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, about to head out. Uh, we're going to drop off the last of the sticker orders, a few of the t-shirt orders, hanging out here with Shaylisi, of course, and who just absolutely just put me to, to shame right now. If you've ordered stickers from me before, you've seen the brown envelopes they show up in, and uh, I was just like, oh man, this is different, this is cool. They show up in like this kind of raw paper brown envelope. I thought it was kind of neat. I mean, it's not that special, it's just a freaking envelope, but I thought it was neat until every single order that Shaylisi packaged every single order that had one of her stickers in it got this treatment. So if you ordered a Shea Lisi sticker, this is the treatment you got. Every single sticker envelope was personalized with other stickers that she bought. I mean, this is if you ordered my stickers too, but, but if one of her stickers was in there, you got that special treatment unless I put it in the wrong envelope and then I'm sorry. This also means they took a couple extra days to make, but like, let's hear it for Shay. Uh, that was above and beyond. And uh, you're lucky if you got in on this first sticker order because it was so and above and beyond. I don't think she's ever gonna do that again. Um, I'll probably do it again, but I definitely won't do it as much. Like probably not, like I did like five or six stickers for her, every person. Hours, this took um, hours, It did take hours multiple days. Multiple sessions of doing it. <laughs> I think it's cool though. The only problem is gonna be is uh, when this pink personalized envelope shows up is if you have a girlfriend, she might look at you twice. All right, up here at the Brap Star Garage, we have Shaylisi back there, Shelby's here as well. And of course, the never ending project that is the Green Goblin. Everyone says, when's it gonna run? When's Wait, it gonna run? Why did you run? introduce the dog? Oh, of course, Drake's here. Shop dog. Shop dog. Waiting for uh, Shelby to drop a piece of sandwich over here, which he has so far proved uh, fruitless. Everyone's saying that this project has taken forever. We're never gonna finish it. It's never gonna happen. And let me tell you, dude, I, I, I don't know. This isn't TV, okay? Things take time, but today, this bike is going to run. That's what I'm saying it right now. You heard it here first, or actually, you'll probably hear it on Shaylisi's channel first because her video on this will come out before mine, but this motorcycle is gonna run today. I will accept nothing less, unless I have to, and then I will. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right, we're Pacific Coast in it today. Come on, I said we're Pacific Coast in it today. All right, the fact that you need two hands to open, <laughs> oh no. The fact that you need two hands to open this up is annoying. It's still full of freaking wood from the last time Shaylisi transported firewood in this thing. Speaking of Shaylisi, yes, it's the next day. Did we ever get the Green Goblin running? Does it move under its own power now? Well, you're just gonna have to go over to Shaylisi's channel and check her video out because, well, it's her video, not mine. Today, we're working on a different shitty Harley. The mail order glide, that's a story for another day. You're gonna have to wait on that one. For today, we're jumping on the Milk Toast Pacific Coast and heading up to see my friends at the Ride Factory. Trust me, it is not lost on me how often our couple of Hondas are used on rescue missions for our Harley Davidsons. The Ride Factory. Not for much longer, they are moving, but we'll be checking out the new dealership. Or it's not, it's not dealership, the new shop anyway. What's up, brother? Good to see you. What's up, Alex? Good to see you, my brother. What's up, Brian? Good folks at the Ride Factory. As always, support your local motorcycle shop. Because guess what? If I was using Amazon, I wouldn't have this today, and it'd probably be the wrong freaking part anyway. All right, yesterday's mission, get the Green Goblin running. Today's mission, the FXR. If you guys have been paying attention, you'll know that I had a uh, small fire, and even a small fire is not a good thing on a motorcycle on the FXR. Please don't catch on fire. Nope, there it goes. It had to do with the starting system and the fact that it wouldn't start and I was having problems with basically when you engage the starter in the FXR, sometimes what would happen is it wouldn't disengage. It would just keep cranking and cranking and cranking. Well, it cranked and it cranked and it cranked and it wouldn't start up until the starter caught on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and hail Mary the entire starter system. I'm going to put a, a new starter relay on it, a new breaker on it, a new solenoid, and obviously a new starter because the old one's toast. And hopefully it doesn't do that again, but there's only one way to find out. And now all sorts of starters on all sorts of motorcycles 
are very different with varying degrees of difficulty to change them. There's some starters on motorcycles that are literally completely internal. There's starters like the ones on my 1200 Goldwing that you need to remove the exhaust and half the fairing to change. And the FXR isn't an easy one either. You do have to remove the primary and get into the guts of the motorcycle to change it. But I actually have put a new solenoid on, on it before, even though I've never put a new starter on it. So I, I got half the knowledge I need. And <laughs> when you're in my world, half the knowledge you need is just enough to get you in trouble. So let's go see what we can mess up. Up at the shop. This is the new starter and the new solenoid that I have for the FXR. Now this is a starter for an 89 and up, which uses a spline shaft. My starter is for a Woodruff key shaft, a tapered shaft uh, transmission, and this is for a spline shaft. Now I have to put this one on this, even though this is a superior starter because this one goes to this transmission, which you can see has a spline shaft. And this is a pretty nice transmission. It's used, obviously, but it's got a Baker shift drum in it, and it's got this, this nice billet door on it. So this is, a, this is a transmission for a motorcycle that makes a little bit of power. Those also use a spline shaft inner and outer primary, which I have sitting over here. There's really only one reason that you would get a spline shaft transmission with some nice Baker internals, a spline shaft inner and outer primary, and a spline shaft starter. I think most of you can guess why I might have those things, but that's a story for another day. Right, first things first, even though that battery was flat as a pancake, it is out of the bike completely. Not only because it had a charge, but because I'm not Shelby. He might be confident enough to take a starter out without disconnecting to the battery. I am not. And I recommend that you not be either. Okay, first mistake that Shade Tree Surgeon has made before he ever turns his first wrench. I secured the motorcycle using the crash bar, which is secured using the floorboard mount, which needs to be removed in order to remove the primary cover. Genius! All right, with that thing securing the motorcycle, I should be able to take these guys off. You would think, anyway, without causing the entire motorcycle to flop on the ground. All right, let's go ahead and pull that primary cover. Okay, hopefully I can get this off without completely removing the floorboard because uh, it is really kind of a pain in the ass to get these two bolts back in. Okay, there's a couple of really, really small and really hard to get parts that hold this whole thing together. If you look in here, there's a tiny little dowel right in here that holds this spring in. And then there's another dowel that comes in through the top that holds this connecting rod that connects these two. And uh, in order to change this out, both of those are gonna have to be removed. Okie dokie, almost lost that one in the oil. Now I should be able to pull this out and pull this starter clutch off, shouldn't I? Or maybe I don't have to. Did I just take all this apart for no reason? I'm not sure. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the back and remove the solo and see what I'm looking at back there. My name is Josh and I know my way around an Evo a little bit. Freaking hardly, dude. I might not have had to take that primary off. I'm not certain yet. All right, this thing is under spring tension, so you kinda gotta be a little careful when you're taking it out. The bolts are very easy to lose. Ask me how I know. Thing longer to the rescue. Ooh. And believe it or not, and I'm sure you probably believe it, I have put it completely back together without this spring inside it before. Solenoid out. Let's see if we can get this starter out of here. Got an Allen key that's rounded out. There's hammer of freaking Torx in there. Thank you, Shelby. There we go. <laughs> As usual, Shelby's tricks always work like a champ. How the hell does it attach to here? Okay, now I gotta figure out how this thing <laughs> on the end of this starter fits on to this starter. Definitely working blind here. I've never done this before. But I'm gonna assume it has something to do with these bolts. That's the only thing I could see that goes the other side that would bolt into this. Looks like that's it, I hope. And it is. Oh, it also takes the starter apart. 
but that's what needed to come off. I don't know if that's good or not, but it certainly smells like something was very burning in there. Does not smell pleasant. I'm gonna go ahead and say that Loctite's probably a good idea for this. Okay, the ones that came off there were, were metric. The ones that are going on are standard. All right, whatever you say. There might be a torque spec on this, but I'm gonna use the old calibrated elbow. All right, let's see if I can get this sucker in there without incident. Wow, would you look at that? It's almost like it's supposed to go in there. About to stick that in there and I realize that should probably have Loctite on it too. Okay, quick trip up to Harbor Freight to grab a new one of these guys because I always twist the old one off every time I've removed a solenoid and <laughs> let's continue. Let's not forget to put that spring back in there and let's try to remember where I set it down. All right, gotcha. Now, hopefully I have these two things connected correctly. All right, after much struggling and cursing, which is uh, par for the course when it comes to me and working on this FXR, I have the new starter and I have the new solenoid installed. Turns out I didn't need to pull the primary, but uh, hey, it really needed a new gasket because it was leaking and it needed some fresh oil anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chalk it up as routine maintenance. All right, I got the new starter in. It's cranking good, but it still doesn't want to run, so. There's only one thing to do when your motorcycle's name is Kyle. I said when your motorcycle's name is Kyle. Well, let's pull the plugs. It's a damn shame when even some aerosol white monster can't get your motorcycle running. All right, let's try this again. time when your motorcycle's name is Kyle. What is dead may never die. Once more, all is right in the world, or all is wrong, depending on which way you look at it, because this thing is an abomination towards God. Ooh, that new starter, baby. Got my Kyle juice in here. What could go wrong? 12 seconds later. juice. I was going back for it and everything. Oh my god, it feels good to be back on the Krusty Glide. Barf party, you can't keep it down. And no matter how much this bike wants to stay down, and trust me, it's probably screaming, please kill me. But I refuse to let this thing die. In fact, <laughs> as you could have guessed, from that new primary, new starter, new transmission. I have plans to do a surgery so foul and so perverted on this motorcycle that God himself will weep. Truly an abomination. Every time I reach highway speeds on this thing, there's just like a little alarm bell that goes off in the back of my head that says, you know, this is just highly, highly dangerous, right? I'm like Pavlov's dog. When that alarm bell goes off, I know it's time to have fun. Who ever wanted to ride a safe motorcycle fast? <laughs> Riding sketchy motorcycles fast is where it's at, baby! <laughs> or at least as fast as the 
this old low compression Evo could go, which is fast enough to get you in trouble, I guess. Once again, proving that life is harder when you're stupid. I absolutely did not need to take the primary off this thing, but hey, I got a primary fluid change. It probably needed it because everybody bitched at me last time that I poured the old tri primary fluid back in there when I put it back together. And now it's got a brand new starter. Now it's a, a cheap Chinese starter. I think I got it for like a hundred bucks or something like that, but that's because it is temporary. Now, ah, uh, yeah, it's temporary. I could just let Bark Party lie until I have my big plans, my surgery that's happening on it. The abomination it shall become, but uh, you know what? This is literally my most favorite motorcycle that I have ever owned in my entire life. I love this bike. And if you think I'm just gonna let it lie around when for a hundred bucks, I can get it back on the road till all my other stuff comes together, I'm damn sure gonna be riding this thing. I know everyone else is like, where's the Ducati? Where's the Rocket 3? I still have them, I still love them. I just, I don't know, man. There's just something about this bike. What can I say? I just freaking love riding this freaking death trap. Yes, it's dangerous. Yes, it breaks down all the time. It's uncomfortable. It's loud. It's unreliable. And on top of all that, it's also super slow and barely legal. But hey, I don't know what to say. The best things in life are just a little bit sketchy. The best things in life you gotta work for. And to make this motorcycle move down the road, you gotta work for it. What in the ever-loving f is going on here? Sorry guys, important FXR stuff to do. This is probably gonna be a pretty short episode today because we're a little short on time. So that's gonna about do it, but I got big plans for Barf Party, both for the future and the abomination it shall become, and the near future. I might try to do something ridiculous on it still. So till next time, y'all, keep it weird.